Hi. In this video, I would like to tell you a few words about SolidWorks for Makers. This is such a special version of SolidWorks, and this version can be used for hobby applications. That is, if you are creating projects for yourself as a hobbyist, you can use this version of SolidWorks, and in this video, I will show you the basic operations of creating 3D solids in this system, and let's start by creating a new project. Here. After selecting a new project, such a window appeared and we choose what we want to create. Do we want to create a single part, a part assembly, or a 2D drawing based on a part or based on an assembly? Let's select part here, which means we're going to create a single part and click OK. And we have a new project, and SolidWorks is a CAD system. It's a 3D CAD system, and in this class of systems, we usually create 3D models, in such a way that we first create a 2D sketch, and then, based on the 2D sketch, we add operations to create 3D solids, and that's how we'll create a solid here, and we'll start by creating a sketch. To create a sketch, switch to the Sketch tab, and click this button here to create a new sketch. Three planes appeared in the workspace, front plane, top plane, and right plane, and these are the basic planes of the coordinate system, and on these planes we can create a sketch. And here, in this case, select the top plane as the sketch plane. And now, on this plane, we can create a 2D shape from which we will create a 3D solid. We will start by creating a rectangle. Select Draw Rectangle and draw the rectangle so that the first corner of the rectangle coincides with the origin of the coordinate system. As you drive the cursor to this place, the beginning of the coordinate system will be marked. And now, as you click the left mouse button, the first corner of the rectangle will be linked to the beginning of the coordinate system. And now click more or less at this point to determine the position of the second corner of the rectangle. And drawing the rectangle is still active. We can draw more rectangles. If we don't want to draw any more rectangles and want to cancel the active command, we click Escape. Now, if you would like to delete some geometry, you can select it and click Delete, or we can also select the geometry with the selection box, and we can also click Delete and OK. Here we have a rectangle created, and at this point this rectangle looks like this, the only relation of it is here. Here, this rectangle is constrained to the origin of the coordinate system, but the other vertices of the rectangle are not specified at all. They have a free position, and we can freely change the dimensions of the rectangle. And now, to specify the dimensions of this rectangle so that they can no longer be freely changed, but simply that this rectangle has specific and defined dimensions, we should choose the Smart Dimension command. And now we indicate what we want to dimension. We indicate the longer side of the rectangle, and here we enter 100 millimeters. Then we point to the short side of the rectangle, and here we enter 50 millimeters. And at this point, the sketch has turned black, and here we still have the information fully defined. This means that the sketch is fully defined, fully dimensioned, and now we cannot freely change either the dimensions of this sketch or the position of this sketch. Because if I now create a second rectangle and add the dimensions of this rectangle, for example, here 50, here 40, this sketch is still blue. This sketch is not black. Here, we have information that the sketch is not fully defined because we added a second geometry. And here this sketch is blue because even though it is already dimensioned, the position of this sketch is not defined. We can freely change the position of this sketch. To do this, we can use either dimensions or constraints, and we can specify the position of this sketch relative to this sketch or relative to the beginning of the coordinate system. However, I will select this sketch and remove this sketch so that there is only this one rectangle. And here we will create another geometry. Choose to draw a circle. I will draw a circle using this command. First, we indicate the location of the center of the circle, and then we specify the point lying on the perimeter of this circle. And in this way, we have created such a circle. I will create another circle here, 
and as you can see, such auxiliary lines appear here. And while drawing this circle, such a dashed line appeared. And at this point, the centers of these circles lie on one line. This is such an auxiliary line, which just defines a characteristic reference relative to other geometry. I click Escape, but now if I grab the center of this circle, I can freely change the position of this circle. Here, as you can see, I have grabbed again, and I can place this circle on the same line on which the center of this circle lies. However, this is in no way related to each other. I can still grab that circle and change the position of that circle. If I want to somehow relate one geometry to another geometry, I can use geometry constraints. And the constraints are precisely something that defines the relationship between the geometries. And I would like to place these circles so that they lie symmetrically relative to the line passing through the center of the rectangle. That's why I will create a construction line at the beginning. And here, as you expand the line, drawing commands is the center line command. Select this command. And now we'll draw the line in such a way that it passes through the center of this rectangle. And here, as I hover near the center of this edge, it will highlight such a point. And now when I click at this point, the beginning of this line has been constrained to the center point of this edge of the rectangle. And I will do the same thing on the other side. And this is how I created a line, the beginning of which is connected to the center of this side of the rectangle, and the end of this line is connected to the center of this side of the rectangle. And this line lies in the center of the rectangle. And now I would like to place these two circles symmetrically relative to this line. And to do this, I can use the constraint. To do this, with the caudal key, I select the two center points of the circles, and then select this line. And here, in the left part of the window, I can specify the relationship of these geometries. Here we have the relation symmetrically. I select this option. And now these two circles are placed symmetrically relative to this line. Now, if I grab the center of one circle, the position of the other circle will change so that these circles are symmetrical. Now I will also add the distance between the centers of these circles. I choose the dimensioning, point to one point, the other point. And here I enter 60 millimeters as the distance between these holes and click, escape to cancel the dimensioning command. And the position of these circles is not yet completely determined because we can still move these circles freely along the Y axis. And now, to determine the position of these circles, we can use either constraints or dimensions. For example, we can create another line that goes through the center of this rectangle. And now we can place the center of the circle on this line, and to do that with the Coral key, select the center of the circle, select the line, and here select the coincident constraint, so that we just constrain the center of the circle to this line. And we can do something like this in another way as well. I clicked Ctrl plus Sad to undo this. Now if I grab the center of the circle, I can move this circle. And as I hover over the line here, a yellow constrained symbol appeared, and this line is highlighted. Now if I lower the circle on this line, then this constraint has also been added, and the center of the circle has been linked to this line. Here we are still missing the diameters of the circles, so I choose dimensioning. I select one circle, and here I enter 15 millimeters as the diameter of the circle and dimensioned only one circle, because I would like the diameter of this circle to be the same as the diameter of this circle. And I could just dimension this circle, but here we are going to add a constraint that will determine that the diameters of these circles will be equal to each other. With the caudal key, I select two circles, and here I choose the equality constraint, and this makes these diameters of the circles equal to each other. And now, if I change the dimension of the diameter of this circle, and in order to change a dimension, we double-click with the left mouse button on this dimension. And here, for example, I type 20 m. Then, the diameter of this circle has also been changed, and the sketch is already fully defined. To specify this sketch, we use dimensions and constraints so as to define specific dimensions 
and specific positions of individual geometries, and from such a sketch we can create 3D geometry. And when it comes to creating 3D solids based on 2D sketches, let's try to make sure that the sketch is fully defined so that the position and shape of the geometry cannot be freely changed, so that just any change is conscious. And now to change something. I have to do it consciously, for example, through dimension editing. I will enter a new dimension value and, okay, I cannot freely change any geometry here. It's just that if the sketch is black, if it's fully defined, then changes have to be made consciously. To close the sketch, we click this icon. We exit the sketch and we have a simple sketch created. And now based on such a sketch, we can create a 3D solid. One of the basic operations for creating 3D solids in 3D CAD systems is the extruded sketch operation. That is, we create a 3D solid based on a 2D sketch. And in SolidWorks, this is the extruded boss operation. Select this operation. And here to create this solid has been selected by default the sketch we created, and here we can specify the length of the extrusion. At the moment, it is 10 millimeters, and we can enter a specific value here, for example, 25 millimeters. Or we can use this arrow, and with this arrow, we can also change the length of the extrusion. And at this point, this solid looks like this. But if you want to get a solid based on selected geometries, not based on the whole sketch, just based on selected geometries, then you can expand the Selected Contours option here. You can right-click here and select Clear Selection. And now you can independently indicate the profiles based on which you want to get a 3D solid. You can, for example, point to this profile and that profile. And now this solid will be made in such a way that this hole will also be filled and it will not be included in the solid. Only one hole will remain. If you want to change something here, it can be unclicked, for example, and the hole will be visible again. And this option is useful if the sketch is more complex and you want to get an extrusion not based on the whole sketch, but only on selected geometries. In this case, we will leave it as it was by default. Based on this sketch, we will create such a cuboid with holes, and to accept it, we click the button. And now we have created a 3D solid based on this sketch. And extruding a sketch is one of the basic operations for creating 3D solids. And the other such operation is material removal based on a 2D sketch. And here we will create another sketch. And besides the fact that we can create sketches on the basic planes of the coordinate system, we can also create sketches on the walls of the model. Select this wall and select Create Sketch and now we sketch on this wall. Select the Draw Groove command and draw the groove so that the points of this groove lie on this edge. Place the first point here, as this line will be highlighted. Place the second point at about this point. Although here we could use this option, but the first option was chosen. So place the second point in this place. And the third, more or less here. Then select Dimensioning and now specify either the length of this line or the distance between these two points. When it comes to Dimensioning, this is where we can specify either the length of the selected geometry or the distance between the points or the distance between the geometries. And here enter 20 millimeters. Then select this line and this line and here enter 10 millimeters. Now we click Escape to cancel the Dimensioning and I would like to connect the center of this groove with the center of the edge of this rectangle. And now, as I grab the center of this groove, I can move this groove along this line because the points of this groove are connected with this line. And now, somehow, I would like to link the center of this rectangle to the center of this line. And notice that at some point, the center of this line appears. Here, as we grab the center point of the line, the center of the rectangle line will be highlighted. And now, as we hover over this spot, these points have been linked together. And now I can no longer freely change the position of this groove. And the sketch is already black, and the groove is already fully defined. And now, based on this sketch, we can add another operation. We leave the sketch, and we will now add a material removal operation based on this sketch. This is the extruded cut operation. 
Select this operation. Here, the sketch we created is selected by default. And now we need to specify the extruded length of this sketch. Here, we can do it with this arrow. We can enter a specific extrude value here, or we can use the operation type. And here, we can select through all, and then the extrusion of this sketch will be done through everything. Or, in situations like this, it's safer to select up to next or up to surface. and we specify the geometry to which the extrusion is to be made. The difference is that in this case we indicate ourselves where the pullout is to be made. And if we choose through all, the pullout will be made through everything. If there were more geometries here, then through all geometries this pullout would be performed. That's why it's safer to just select either up to next or up to surface and we just indicate the geometry to which we want the pullout of the cutout to be made and accept. And that's how we removed the material based on this sketch. Other useful operations in 3D CAD 3D modeling are the rounding and chamfering of edges. Let's now add the rounding of this and that edge. Select rounding operations. Next, we indicate the edges to be rounded. Here it is active to point to the edges to be rounded and point to these two edges. Here in this case, we do not need to do it with the Cottrell key. And here we specify the radius of this rounding. Enter two millimeters here. And here we can see how it will look in the preview. Here we have a partial preview and here we have a full preview. And this is what the rounding will look like. We click OK to accept, and this is how we added the rounding to the edge. And when it comes to chamfering an edge, we do it similarly. Here we select the chamfer operation. We select the edges we want to chamfer. Here we have the full preview selected, and in a moment, we will specify the chamfer dimension. Here we enter 5 millimeters as the chamfer dimension. And here we can still specify the angle, but let's leave 45 degrees and click OK. And in this way, we can add rounds and chamfers to the edges. Now, if you would like to change something in this model, we can either edit the operation, or we can edit the sketch based on which this operation was made. And to edit the operation, we either right click on the selected operation, and here choose Edit Feature and we can enter new parameters for this operation. For example, here, I will enter four millimeters as the radius value. We can also click once with the left mouse button, and here, such a window will appear. And here we also have the edit feature option. And this is also where we can edit these operations. Here it cancels. I will not make any changes. And when it comes to editing a feature that was created based on a sketch, as you can see here, this sketch is not visible. But if you expand these operations, then here we have the sketches based on which these operations were created. And to edit the sketch, then we click the left mouse button and here a window appears. We select Edit Sketch and we can modify the sketch, for example. Let's change the diameter dimension of this circle to 15 millimeters and the whole spacing to 70. And here, we will still change this dimension to 140 millimeters. We accept the changes, and these changes were applied to the modal. When creating 3D solids, it can also be useful to be able to change the color of such a solid. To change the color of a solid, click this icon. Edit Appearance. And here in the left part of the window, you can specify the color of this solid. Here, you can choose one of the standard colors, or you can specify any color you want. And we click OK to accept this. And here from the right part of the window, such a tab has been opened. And in this way, we can also change colors. We can simply open this tab by clicking on this icon. And now to add a color to this solid here, 
we choose a color that suits us. For example, I will choose one of these colors. And now to add a color to this solid, we simply grab this color, drag it onto the solid. Such a window appears in which we specify to which feature we want to add this color. To add a color to the whole solid, we just select this icon here. And the color we selected was applied to the solid. And if you create designs, whether in CAD or any other program, it's a good idea to save such designs regularly. To save a SolidWorks project, we click the icon. Here we choose Save to this PC. And in case this file has not been saved yet, a window will appear where we specify the file name and the location of this file. And here we can specify the type of this file. We can save this file in the native SOLIDWORKS extension, which is SLDPRT, or we can choose another file format, either STEP format or Parasolid format, or we can also save such a file in STL extension and, for example, we can use this file for 3D printing. At first, save the file in the native SOLIDWORKS extension. Click Save, and the file has already been saved. Now, if we're going to make any changes to this file, then just click this icon for those changes to be applied. And now I'm going to save this file in STL format. And at this point, if I click this icon or select Save to this PC here, I can't save this file under a new name because here we're just overwriting the changes in the project. But here, as you go to this place, a menu will appear, and from this menu we can choose File Save as New. Then we can specify the name and location, but here I will choose STL Format. I save it as P1 STL. I click Save. OK. And this file has been saved as P1 STL. And now I'll open this file in Prusa Slicer. And based on this file, I can prepare a program for a 3D printer. Here in this orientation, this has been imported, but we can add here a rotation around the x-axis of 90 degrees and OK. And just based on the 3D model created in SOLIDWORKS, we can prepare a program for the 3D printer, and we can 3D print. We will now move on to the creation of the next file. And as in this case, we will also create a 3D solid in the next file based on the 2D sketch. Here we use the sketch extrude operation and we will create another solid based on the rotation of the sketch around the indicated axis. Select new file. Here we create a new part, okay? And as you can see, a new project has been created. And now if you want to switch between projects, then either here on the taskbar you can select the appropriate icon, or from the window menu, you can select the file you want to switch to. Let's go back to the new file here and create a new sketch, based on which we will add a solid by rotating the sketch. Select Create New Sketch. And in this case, select Front Plane as the sketch plane, and choose the Draw Line command and create a shape, more or less. We will create shapes from several line segments. We simply point to the next vertices of the line. And here, as I moved the mouse, it was switched from drawing lines to drawing arcs. To go back to drawing lines, we clicked A and went back to drawing lines. Here again, I drove to the point and moved the mouse, and again, the drawing of arcs was activated, so I click A so that I return to line drawing, and now I draw the line in such a way that I end up at the height of this point. And I get to this point so that I finish drawing this sketch. I click Escape to cancel the line drawing command, and now we will add dimensions. The solid that we will create from this sketch will be a rotating solid. That is, these dimensions will be mainly diameters. And we could dimension it in such a way that we simply add such a dimension. And here we enter the value of half the diameter. But we could also do it in such a way that we create a center line. 
it will draw this line more or less like this. Okay. And now, as we're going to add dimensions, we can do it by selecting this line. Then we specify the second point, and now we can either specify the dimension of the half diameter. And as we move the cursor below this line, here we can specify the diameter dimension. Okay, now I'm going to extend this line a little bit more so that it's not obscured by this sketch. And I will add the dimension of the length of the whole sketch. If you would like to dimension the angle between two geometries, then you simply need to indicate the two geometries. And here we can specify the dimension of the angle between these geometries. And when it comes to adding dimensions, we can either dimension specific geometries or distances between geometries. But we can also dimension the distances of the geometries from a point. And that's how we can also add dimensions. Okay, we already have the sketch fully dimensioned, fully defined. We click this button to exit the sketch. And now we will create a solid based on this sketch by rotating the sketch around the indicated axis. This is the Revolved Boss operation. Select this operation. Here the sketch has been selected by default and the axis of rotation has been selected by default. If you would like to change the axis of rotation, you can activate this field and you can indicate another geometry as the axis of rotation. Here, let's return to this line. The axis of rotation, as you can see, can be the sketch geometry or just the auxiliary geometry. And as in the case of extruded boss here, we can also specify the contours from which this solid will be created. In this case, we will create a solid based on this contour. And here another important parameter can be the value of the angle of rotation. If here we enter, for example, 180 degrees, then a solid will be created like this. If here is 360 degrees, then this solid will be full. Simply, the sketch will be rotated by 360 degrees around this axis, and a 3D solid will be created on this basis. We accept this, and in this way, that is, by rotating the sketch around the indicated axis, we can also create 3D solids. In this case, as in the previous example, Based on the 2D sketch, we can also add material removal by rotating this sketch around the indicated axis. Create another sketch. In this case, also select the same plane that we used for the first sketch. But as you can see, at this point these planes are not visible. But as you expand the features of this model here, we can also point to this plane at this point and select the front plane. And as in that example, we will also draw a groove here. Choose to draw a groove. Here, select this option. And now, point to the center of this edge as the first point of the groove. As you hover over this place, such a symbol will appear. And as you click on this place, the first groove point, that is, the center of the groove will be connected with this point. And place the second groove point on this line. And specify the width of the groove. And now we're going to add dimensions. Select dimensioning. Specify the length of this groove to be 10 millimeters and the width of this groove also to be 10 millimeters. The sketch is fully defined. We no longer need to specify the position of this groove here because the center of this groove has been linked to the center of this edge. We leave the sketch and now to remove material, based on this sketch by rotating this sketch around the indicated axis. It's just as the name suggests. We still need an axis, so we need to go to edit this sketch. And here we will create an auxiliary line that will define the axis of rotation, and this line will pass through the center of this solid, and this we can draw very easily because the center of this solid coincides with the x-axis. Therefore, we place the first point of this axis at this point. 
and let's place the end of this line at the center of the edge defining this wall. We click Escape to cancel the drawing of this line. We exit the sketch and the operation based on which we can remove the material by rotating the sketch around the indicated axis is the revolved cut operation. Select this operation. Here while selecting this operation, this sketch was inactive. Therefore, I cancel this operation and select this sketch. And now, as I select revolved cut, this sketch has already been selected, and now we activate axis pointing. We point this line, and here in this way, we can add just cutting this material by rotating this sketch around the indicated axis. But I'll go back to what we had at the time when this sketch was not selected. That is, the sketch is unchecked, it is not highlighted, and I selected the revolved cut operation. And here we simply have to point to some geometry of this sketch. We can point to this sketch, or we can point to the rotation axis. If I point to this sketch, this will be created here like this, but now we can change this. That is, it activates pointing to the axis of rotation. I select this line, and we have something like this. What we had in the case where we first selected the sketch, and then selected the revolved cut operation. And here, as in the case of adding a solid by rotating the sketch around the indicated axis, we can also specify the angle at which this operation will be performed. But here, let's return to an angle of 360 degrees and accept this operation. And this is how we created something like this. That is, based on this sketch, we removed the material by rotating this sketch around the indicated axis. And such a cut, which we have now added through the revolved cut operation, we could have considered when creating the sketch of this part. We could have simply added it at the sketching stage. Now I'm going to move on to editing the sketch. And here we edit this sketch a little bit. We're going to draw a circle whose center will coincide with the center of this line. That is, as this point appears here, I click the left mouse button to determine the location of the center of the circle at this point, and I will place the second point more or less here. Now I will add the dimension of this circle and here the diameter 10 millimeters. And at this point the sketch of the circle and the sketch defining the outline of this solid are two separate sketches. But we can make one sketch out of this. We can simply trim the unnecessary edges, we select this function, and now we have the power trim option active here and we just press the left mouse button and drag the cursor over the edges we want to remove. I here removed these two edges and by removing this edge, the constraint was lost. And so that the center of this circle is again in the middle of this line between these two points. We can use dimensions for this, or we can use constraints. In this case, we'll use constraints, but let's create an auxiliary geometry. I will draw this geometry in such a way that it passes through the center of this circle. Well, okay, I click Escape, and now as I grab the center of the circle, this line also moves because it is constrained to the center of the circle. And now, with the caudal key, I select this point, I select this point, and I select this line. And here, we select the symmetry constraint. And now, the center of this circle lies between these points. But as you can see, we can still change the position of the center of this circle, upwards and downwards. And now, to make the center of the circle lie in this line, let's select the center of the circle. And with the caudal key, for example, Let's select this point and here select the horizontal constraint. And this constraint made these two points lie in one line. And with this, this sketch is now fully constrained. Using the center line, we placed the center of the circle on this line. This was created automatically when drawing this line. Then we place this line between these two points so that this line and thus the center of this circle lies exactly between these two points. And then we specified this, so that the center of the circle lies in one vertical line with this point. And with that, 
This sketch is now fully defined. We can leave this sketch, and such a cutout has been created on the model. As you can see, we can take such cutouts into account already while sketching, or we can create it as another operation. And what is a better solution is I think it is an individual issue and simply depends on the complexity of the project. And I think that when you start creating your own projects, you will work out for yourself a solution that will be better and more convenient for you. As for creating 3D models in 3D CAD systems based on a 2D sketch, it's not that once we have created a solid based on a 2D sketch, we can't do anything more with it. We can combine different operations with each other, and we can add more operations to this solid. We can, for example, add another sketch extrude here. We can create a sketch on this wall. I select this wall and create a sketch here and create a rectangle from the center here so that the center of this rectangle lies in the center of this wall. Okay? I'm going to add dimensions 10 and here also 10 so that it's a square. Okay, and now I add an extrusion of this sketch to five millimeters. And we added another operation to this solid. We combined two operations here, the operation of adding a solid based on the sketch by rotating this sketch and the operation of extrude the sketch. And similarly, we can also create a sketch cutout here. Now I will create a sketch on this wall. And here, I will draw a circle with a diameter of 5. And now I'm going to select the extruded cut. And here, I select up to next so that the cutout is made to this wall, and I accept the selection. And this is how the hole was created. And here we can create another section of this solid. I will create another sketch on the front plane. And here I choose again to draw a groove with a center point. As the center point of this groove, I choose the center of this edge. I will place the second point more or less here and create such a groove. And now I'm going to go to dimensioning. And note that as I select the dimension of this line, I can either dimension this line in such a way that there will be a distance given in the x-axis between these points. But it won't be the length of the line. It will just be the distance in the x-axis between these points. We can add the distance in the y-axis but we can also add the dimension of the length of this line by positioning the cursor accordingly. And here I enter 10 millimeters, okay? And now I select this line and this line to add the distance between these two lines. And here I enter five millimeters. Okay, I'm leaving the sketch and now based on this sketch, we're going to add a revolved boss operation. And so here in this case, as before, we don't have an axis for rotation and this line has been selected as the axis for rotation. Here, however, I would like to perform a rotation of this sketch around the axis of this object, and in this sketch, we have not created this axis. Of course, we could have created such an axis in this sketch, but in one of the previous sketches, we created such an axis, and it was the sketch that was used to create the main part. I will expand this first operation, and here I right-click on this sketch and select Show so that this sketch is shown, so that this sketch is visible. And now, as the axis pointing is active, I can point to this axis as the axis of rotation of this sketch, so that by rotating this sketch around this axis, the material is created here. And now we click OK, and another piece of material has been added here this sketch is still visible. This is the sketch of this operation, so I right-click here and select this eye icon so that I hide the visibility of this sketch. And here we added another piece of solid using the operation of adding material by rotating the sketch. As you can see, we can use different operations when creating one 3D solid. And in fact, 
we can use as many of these operations as we need. It's not that once we create a solid based on a sketch, it has to stay that way. We can add more parts of the model, we can add more operations so that we get what we want. And here too, we can add chamfering and rounding operations. I select with the curl key this and that edge and choose the rounding command, and here I enter 2 millimeters as the rounding radius. I click OK, and the rounding has been added. We will now move on to the next file. This one you can close and create a new file, the new part. And we will start by creating a sketch on the top plane and here create a rectangle from the center. Add the dimensions of this rectangle here, 100, here 70, OK. And now, if based on the sketch you want to add, for example, a extruded operation, you can close the sketch and select this operation. Or, you can just go to this operation without leaving the sketch, and when you select this operation, the sketch will automatically close. And here add an extrusion for 70 millimeters, and click OK to approve it. And we have created a solid like this. And now select this edge and add a chamfer here. And specify the size of the chamfer to 40 millimeters. And now we're going to create a box from this solid. And we can do this using the shell operation. Select this operation. And at this point, select the walls that will be removed. And here, we will remove this wall and this wall. And here we specify the thickness of the walls that will remain. And here enter 3 millimeters. And now select this option to show a preview, and it will look more or less like this. And here, we have the Shell Outward option, which means we can create these walls outward. Then, the dimensions of this object will be increased accordingly by the thickness of the walls. However, here we will do it inward. And accept, and we created something like this and we got such a box. And now on this wall we will create a text. Select this wall and create a sketch on this wall. At the beginning we'll create an auxiliary line, and this line will be used to determine the position of the text and I would like the center of this line and the beginning of the coordinate system to lie on the same line. And with the Cottrell key, I select the beginning of the coordinate system. I select the center of the line. Here, as I go near the center of the line, this point will be highlighted, and with the Cottrell key, I select this point and here I select vertical constraint. Then let's add the distance of this line from the beginning of the coordinate system to 5 millimeters and I would like this line to be an auxiliary line. Therefore, I select this line, and here, such a pop-up menu appeared, and here, I choose to change this line to construction geometry. And now, I proceed to create the text. Here, I select this line as the auxiliary line on which the text will be created. Here, we enter the text. Here we can specify the position of this text relative to this line. So I created this line so that this text is centered to this line and so that it is centered just relative to the y-axis. And at this point, the document font is used. As we select this and click this button, we can specify the parameters of the font. And here, I'll bold this font and increase the height of the characters to 10 millimeters. Okay, and here this text got away a little bit, but we'll fix that soon. For now, I'll accept it as is. I'll lengthen that line a little bit. Okay, as you can see, after lengthening this line, this text has already been adjusted here, and the whole text is visible. Okay, exit the sketch, and now, based on this text, we can add an extruded boss, so that this text is convex, or we can add an extruded cut, 
so that this text is concave. And at the beginning, I'm going to add an extruded boss for one millimeter, and it looks like this. If we wanted to make this text concave, then I click Ctrl plus Z to undo it. I select this sketch and choose Extruded Cut here and here. I choose Blind as the type of extrusion and specify the depth of the extrusion to one millimeter. And this is how we created the concave text on the model wall. Now we will create another sketch on this wall. Select this wall and choose a new sketch and draw two circles more or less like this. Now let's add the dimensions of these circles. This circle four millimeters, this one seven. And now select line drawing and draw a line from this circle point to this circle. And draw a second line similarly from this circle point to this circle so that this line is vertical. Now select dimensioning again and add the distance between the centers of the circles to 10 millimeters. And now add the distance from this circle to this wall and here enter 15. Okay. And the distance of this circle from this edge. And here enter 40 millimeters. Okay. I click Escape to cancel the dimensioning. And here still, the centers of the circles are not connected to each other. So with the Coral key, I select the centers of the circles and choose Vertical Constraint. And now, trim the unnecessary edges. That is, this edge and that edge. And we have such a sketch. Okay. And now, based on this sketch, we're going to add a extruded cut. And here up to next. Okay. And here by the fact that we selected up to next, the cutout will be made to this wall. We accept that. And now we're going to add a mirror image of this hole relative to one of the planes of the coordinate system. And this will be the right plane. So that we add a mirror image of this hole from this side. And to do this, we choose the mirror operation. First, we point to the mirror face plane, which is the plane to mirror, and we point to the right plane here. OK, and then we indicate features to mirror, and we can just indicate this operation here. And we accept, and we added a mirror image of this hole on the other side. And OK, with this method, we created such a box. We used the shell operation here and created two holes using a mirror feature. And now, if you want, then you can save this file. If not, then you can close this and we will move on to the next file where you will learn more SOLIDWORKS operations. Create a new file, and we will start by creating a sketch on the top plane, and create a circle here with a diameter of 100 millimeters. We're going to exit the sketch, and now we're going to add a 10 millimeter extrude based on this sketch. Okay. And now we will create another sketch, this time on this wall. And we will also create a circle. With a diameter of 10 millimeters. At a distance of 40 millimeters from the origin of the coordinate system. And with the caudal key, select these two points and add a vertical relation so that the center of the circle lies on the same line as the beginning of the coordinate system, so that the center of the circle lies on the y-axis. Okay, we leave the sketch, and now we will create a hole based on this sketch.
And now, I would like to get 10 holes evenly spaced on this circle, and we can approach this in a couple of different ways. Here in this case, as we have a hole created, we can use the circular pattern. Select the circular pattern option. Here, in the first step, the indication of features or walls for the circular array was activated. You can select this wall, and now we indicate the axis of rotation. And here, as the axis of rotation, we can indicate just any axis of rotation, but such an axis we have not created, then we can also indicate the edge of the circle and the center of this circle. The axis of this circle will be selected as the axis for the circular pattern, and here we select equal spacing so that these holes are evenly spaced. Here the angle was automatically changed to 360 degrees. That is, to make this circular array at the full angle of 360 degrees. And here we enter 10 as the number of occurrences so that there are 10 of these holes equally spaced on the circle. Okay, and now if we accept this, we have 10 holes evenly spaced on this circle. Here I'm going to go into editing this operation some more. Here, if it is about the angle, then we can enter a different angle value. For example, if we enter 160 degrees, then here these 10 holes will be equally spaced on the 160 degrees. And this is where this equal spacing option is responsible for making sure that these holes are evenly spaced. Here, I'll go back to the 360 degree angle. Okay. And we have created something like this. And now I'm going to remove this operation. I select this operation in the operation tree and press delete. I accept the deletion and this operation will also be deleted. I also press delete. And we won't need this sketch either. We also delete this sketch and now we will go to edit the sketch of the first operation. I click right here and choose edit sketch. And here at the sketch stage, we can also create such a circle. I will add a circle with a diameter of 10 millimeters. offset from the origin of the coordinate system by 40 millimeters and so that the circle lies on the y-axis. We select these two points with the control key and select the vertical constraint here. Now I accept this. And now as far as the circular pattern is concerned, we can also add such a pattern at the sketching stage. And to do that, expand this option here and select from circular sketch pattern. As the axis for the array, we point to this circle, and the center of this circle has been selected as the, the point around which the circular array will be made. We can also manually enter the coordinates of this point, or we can also just point to this point manually and then point to the elements for the circular array. Here, I will remove the selection and select this circle. And an array of four elements on 360 degrees has been created. And here we can increase the number of occurrences to 10. And now, if we accept this, evenly spaced circles on this solid have been created. And now, as we go out of the sketch, holes have been created based on these circles. And in some cases, when it comes to creating patterns, you can just do that either at the sketch stage or just as another operation. And here I will create another sketch on this wall. This time, we will also create a circle with a diameter of 5 millimeters, and this circle will be offset 30 millimeters from the beginning of the coordinate system. And as before, we will also place this circle on the Y axis. Okay, and exit the sketch. And based on this sketch, we'll add an extrusion for 10 millimeters. And based on that, we'll create a circular pattern. The axis for the pattern, I select this edge so that the center of this edge is selected as the axis to a circular pattern. And here I will also add 10 evenly spaced occurrences of this feature. 
and in this way, we created something like this. Also, as you can see, circular pattern is a useful tool, because in some cases, it can make modeling parts much easier and faster. And so when it comes to such tools that make it easier to create 3D models, where there are repeating features, we also have a linear pattern, just like the circular array. And now we're going to create a new sketch. Here I will create a rectangle on the top plane. A rectangle of 100 by 70 millimeters. Okay, I'll add an extrusion of 10 millimeters. And here, we're going to create a hole. And when creating holes, we can create holes based on the 2D sketch. Or we can use the hole wizard. Choose this option. And here we have the types of holes. Here, let's choose counter bore. And the standard can be ISO. And here, let's leave the default parameters. Here, we specify the hole standard. Here, the hole type. Let's change the size to M10 to make this hole a little bigger. And now, let's go to the Position tab and indicate the wall where we want to place this hole. And let's place this hole at this position. And now we can use dimensioning and we can specify the distances of this hole from for example, the edges of the model. And here, I will offset from one edge and from the other edge by 15 millimeters. I'm going to switch to the hole type, and I'm going to change this hole to a slightly smaller one, for M5. And we'll leave it like that. And I accept. And we've created a hole like this. Now, if you would like to change something here, you can left click and here we select edit feature. And here countersink hole has been selected as the hole type. I will switch to counter bore and I click OK to approve it. And we have created one hole. Of course, using the hole wizard, we could create more of these holes. But here to create more holes, we will use the linear pattern. When it comes to linear array, there is this option. Select this option. Here we can make a linear pattern in two directions. Direction 1 and Direction 2, and the indication of Direction 1 is activated. To do this, you can, for example, point to the edge of the model, and this will be Direction 1. Now this has been switched to specify the second direction, and in a similar way, we can indicate the edge of the model here. Of course, if you want to get a pattern in one direction, then you do not fill this in. Here you leave it blank, and then the pattern will be made only in one direction. And if you want to make a liner pattern in two directions, then indicate the second line specifying the second direction. Here you can't see anything in the preview, because we have only one occurrence in the second direction. But if you add another occurrence, it will appear on the preview. Here note that the second direction is executed in this direction. To reverse this, you can click this button, and now the pattern in the second direction will be executed this way. Here in the first direction, the holes will be arranged this way, and in the second direction, they will be arranged this way. And so here as far as this liner pattern is concerned, we have the spacing and instances setting. Here we specify the distances between the holes, for example, 20 millimeters, and the number of these occurrences, and similarly, we can do it in the other direction. We specify the distances between the holes and the number of occurrences, but if you would like to distribute these holes on this solid at equal distances, where the distances between these holes are not important, and you need a specific number of elements, then we can select up to reference here and now, point as a reference, for example, this wall. And now this pattern has been made to this wall, but we still have here a distance between the holes of 20 millimeters. But here, as we switch to this option, we can specify the number of holes to appear in the pattern in this direction. And here, as we look at it from the top, the last occurrence of the hole has such a position that the center of the hole coincides with this edge. And I would like the last hole, as in this case, 
to be offset from this edge by 15 millimeters. That is, the center of this hole should be offset from this edge by 15 millimeters to the center. And we can do it here. Here we enter 15 millimeters. And now the first hole is offset from this edge by 15 millimeters. And the last hole is offset by 15 millimeters from this edge. And we have five holes in the first direction. And we will do the same with the second direction. Here we also select up to reference. And I indicate this wall as a reference. And here I select this option to specify the number of occurrences. And here I enter three occurrences and also give an offset of 15 millimeters from this edge. And in this way, we created a linear pattern consisting of a certain number of elements, which are arranged so that in the direction of the first, they have equal spacing between them, and in the direction of the second, they also have equal spacing between them. Here, by the way. I will point out that here, we specify the features to the linear pattern and accept the linear pattern. And with these few simple steps, we created something like this. And the linear pattern and the circular pattern that can greatly facilitate the design of such parts. And here, by the way, I would like to show one more thing. I would like to add a chamfer for all the edges on this wall. And just as we previously selected the edges to be chamfered, we can also select the entire wall. We select the chamfer operation, and now we specify a dimension, for example, one millimeter. And the chamfer has been added to all the edges of this wall, and something like this can also be very useful in some cases. Now, we'll move on to the next example, and I'll show you another interesting operation, and this will be the swept boss operation. And let's start by creating a sketch on the top plane. Choose line drawing and draw an initial shape, more or less something like this. Now let's add rounding at these points. Select this command. And to specify the rounding, you can simply indicate a point, or we can indicate two lines between which the rounding is to be added. And here we can specify the dimension of the radius, but leave the default value for now. And now proceed to dimension the individual elements of this geometry. And so this line here add a dimension of 50 millimeters. Here as the length of this line also enter 50 millimeters and the length of this line also 50 millimeters. And now double click with the left mouse button on this radius and here also enter the value of the radius 50 millimeters. And both these radii are equal to each other, so the dimension of this radius has also been changed. And now select this line and this line to determine the angle between these lines. And here enter 135 degrees and exit the sketch. And we already have a sketch created. And this sketch will be the path to extrude another sketch. And now we're going to create another sketch on a plane perpendicular to this plane and deselect this geometry so that it's not selected. That is, just left-click in the workspace. Now select the Sketch command. And here expand the Operations tree and select Front Plane as Sketch Plane and create here, for example, a groove. More or less like this. And let's add the dimensions of this groove. Here, 5 millimeters. And here, 3. Exit the sketch. And we have created something like this. And now we're going to add an extrusion of this groove along this path. And the groove may or may not be selected. I will uncheck it here for now so that all the elements of this operation can be added manually. We go to the Features tab and select the Swept Boss operation here. And here we specify the Profile Sketch, that is, select the Groove, and here we specify the Path Sketch. 
and this is how the extruding of this groove along the path will be done. But here we have the circular profile option, and if you select this option, here we just specify the path and specify the diameter of the circle that will be extruded along this path. If we just wanted to make a circle extrusion along the path, we don't have to create a circle here, we can just use this option. But if we have a profile created and we want to perform profile extrusion along a path, then we use this option and indicate the profile to be extruded. And now if we accept it, we have something like this. And here we have created sketches on the basic planes of the coordinate system, but sometimes it can happen that the path sketch is in a different orientation. And for example, you cannot use the basic plane of the coordinate system. And now I will create a new file. And here I will create a sketch of such a path. I will create it, for example, on the front plane, and I will create something like this. Here, I will add the rounding of this sketch. I'm not going to add dimensions. We have this sketch, and I would like this sketch now to be the path along which I'm going to extrude the profile. And it would be useful for me to create this profile just at the end of this line or at the end of this line. And here, as you can see, none of the planes of the coordinate system will help me with this. Therefore, we need to create such a plane manually. And to create such a plane, go to the Features tab and select Reference Geometry here and select Plane. And now we specify the reference geometry and select this point and select these lines and a plane perpendicular to this line has been created. At this point, we accept this and now on this plane, we can create a sketch. Select this plane and select Create Sketch. And now on this plane, we can create a profile, which we will extrude along the path. Here, I'm not going to add dimension either. We leave the sketch, and so I select the swept operation. The profile has been selected, now points to the path. And this plane is visible here. If you want to turn off its visibility, click here with the left mouse button. A pop-up window will appear and click the hide icon to turn off the visibility of this plane. As for the swept boss operation, as with the extruded boss and extruded cut operations, we have the equivalent of this operation here. This is the swept cut operation. That is, here we can make a material cut by extruding a profile along a path. And first, let's create a sketch on the top plane. Create a rectangle here, with dimensions of 100 by 70 millimeters. And exit the sketch. And now, let's add an extrusion at 20 millimeters. And now we will create a path sketch on this wall. For example, choose line drawing and do something like this. Here, I will create the center line so that we use the symmetry constraint here so that these two lines are placed symmetrically regarding this line. Now with the Cottrell key, I'm going to select these two lines, and here I'm going to select the equality constraint, and similarly, I'm going to do with these lines. Also, equality constraint. Now let's add the dimensions. Here the length of this line, 30, the length of this line also 30. And the distance between these lines 50 millimeters. The sketch is black. It is fully defined. We can leave the sketch. And let's go back to editing the sketch. Here, let's add rounding at these points. Select rounding 
and here point to these points. And here, a message appeared that the constraints can be removed. We click OK. Of course, here we could add these radii before we added the constraints. Then we would have avoided a few clicks. But OK, here everything is fine. Increase the value of this radius to 15 millimeters and exit the sketch. And now we're going to create a section sketch and we're going to create a section sketch on this wall. Select this wall and choose Create Sketch. And we will create this sketch so that it coincides with either this point or this point. And here select, for example, a groove sketch and place the center of the groove at this point. As you drive the cursor on this point, this point will be highlighted. And now as you click here, the center of the groove will be constrained with this point. Draw more points of the groove and go to dimensioning. This dimension 5 millimeters and this dimension 4 millimeters and exit the sketch. And now, based on these two sketches, we will add a profile cut along the path and select the swept cut operation. Here this sketch has already been selected as the profile because this sketch was selected. If you would like to indicate another profile, or if this profile was not selected, we do it just like the swept boss operation. We simply activate this window and indicate what we want the profile to be. And here it is active to indicate the path along which this profile will be extruded. We select this sketch and accept this operation. And we created something like this. That is, we added a extrusion of this profile along this path. Another interesting operation is the lofted boss operation. Let's create some profiles based on which we will add this operation. Select a sketch and create the first sketch on the top plane and create a polygon here, for example. And here specify the number of sides of this polygon. It can be a hexagon. Place the center of this polygon at the origin of the coordinate system and place the second point approximately here. Then add the dimensions, and dimension here the diameter of the circle inscribed in this polygon, and enter here 70 millimeters. The sketch is not yet defined, because the position of this polygon is not defined. And we will do it in such a way that with the Karl key we select this point and the origin of the coordinate system. And here we choose the horizontal constraint, so that these two points are in one line. And now the sketch is fully defined, and exit the sketch, and we have created the first profile. But this lofted boss operation works in such a way that we create an extrusion through the profiles, and we need at least one more profile here, so that we perform this operation and we will create a second profile on a plane that will be offset from this plane by 50 millimeters. To do this, select the Reference Geometry command and select Plane and specify here the first reference and the reference will be the plane on which we created this sketch and it will be the top plane. And here we can specify the offset of this plane and enter a value of 50 millimeters so that we create a new plane offset by 50 millimeters from the top plane. And now on this plane we create another sketch. And here we can also create a hexagon. This time we will create a hexagon more or less like this. Okay, now let's add the dimensions. Here enter 80 millimeters as the diameter of this circle. And now define the position of this polygon. And here, select this line and choose a vertical constraint so that this line is vertical. OK, exit the sketch. And we have two profiles here. Let's create one more profile. Select Reference, Geometry, Plane. And point to this plane as the reference. And we'll move away from this plane by 50 millimeters as well. OK. And here create a sketch on this plane 
and here we will create something else. Create, for example, a circle with a diameter of 50 millimeters and exit the sketch. And we have three profiles. And now we're going to add lofted boss operations. Select this operation, and now we indicate the profiles from which we will create the solid. Select the first profile, then the second profile, and then the third profile. Click OK to accept. Let's turn off the visibility of the planes. And in this way, we have created something like this. Of course, if we need to, we can use more profiles in this operation, based on which we will create a solid. As you can see, quite interesting effects can be achieved with this operation. And as with the other operations in which we create a solid based on a 2D sketch, we have a lofted cut operation that can perform material removal based on profiles, and we will create a new file. And here create a new sketch on the top plane. Draw a rectangle. Here we will create a cuboid with dimensions of 100 by 70. And here add an extrusion of 30 millimeters. Okay, and now we will create profiles based on which we will remove the material. Create the first profile on this wall. Select this wall and choose Create sketch. Here, draw a circle so that the center of this circle lies at the center of this edge and add the diameter dimension. And here enter 30 millimeters. OK, exit the sketch. We have the first profile ready. Now we will create another profile on this wall. Select this wall and create a sketch here. And here we will also create a circle in a similar way so that the center of the circle lies in the center of this edge. And add here a circle with a diameter of 40 millimeters. Okay, exit the sketch. And here we will create another profile in the center of this solid. And for this we could create an auxiliary plane. But we created this solid in such a way that this plane passes through the center of this solid. But if in another situation, you would like to create a plane that passes through the center of the solid, you can create such a plane. Choose the reference geometry command, plane, and here point to this wall as the first reference. And you can do this by offsetting this plane by the appropriate value. But you can also point to a second reference, and then automatically, this plane will be placed between these two walls. And in this case, Exactly this plane coincides with the right plane, and just in this particular case, it wasn't necessary to create this plane, but let's select this plane, and now we'll create another sketch on this plane. And here create a sketch of the groove also in such a way that the center of this groove is placed in the center of this line. Place the second point also on this line, And now let's add the dimensions of the groove. Here enter 30 millimeters. And here 20. OK, we exit the sketch. And here we have three profiles. And now, based on these profiles, we will remove the material. Select the lofted cut operation. And just like the lofted boss operation, we simply point to the profiles. And we click OK. And in this way, we created something like this. I will turn off the visibility of this plane. As you can see, the swept boss, lofted boss, swept cut, or lofted cut operations allow you to get quite interesting effects. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to this channel.